YouTube was good. It's about 7 a.m. Friday. Been up since 4. And I'm about to head to the calisthenics park to get this workout out. Get the day started off on a positive note. I've been doing more to get outside, just in general. And uh, I really prefer working out outside as well. And I've been trying to nurse this back pain and just training has taken a shift from getting big to now uh, uh, getting rid of my back pain, getting better with my body weight. You know, I'm big enough, guys, to be honest with you. Like, I've been looking at myself like, why do I need to get any bigger? Like, yeah, it would be cool to have a little bit more size in certain areas and sculpt. But at the end of the day, right now, the priority is getting better with my own body weight, moving better, feeling better, and learning this fucking boxing so I can beat a motherfucker's ass. And um, that's what we're about to do. It's raining outside, uh, but a little rain has never stopped me. It's never fucking stopped me. If anything, I get, it. it makes me go harder, right? I'm gonna be the only one out there. I'm gonna be killing it. We got this salt water going, get a nice pump, fasted. Uh, it's about six miles away, so the calisthenics park is far as fuck. I don't know if I'll set up my phone to record any shots on the way there, but while I'm there, I'll definitely at least set up a, a few quick shots. Granted, like I said, it is rainy. But you know, it is what it is. We're about to get a fat pump, about to get this fucking workout in. Let's fucking go. I don't know everything, but I do know one thing. You're only as strong as how strong you stand behind your people, as the love you give to your homies. That's all this shit amounts to. And I'm trying to tell more stories on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a story. It's kind of a collection of stories, if you will. Um, but just from a young age, the drugs always found me. I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> Either I was always I was always a fairly good kid growing up, you know, fairly disciplined. <laughs> parents were strict. Lost my brother when I was young, so my parents didn't really uh, let us get into belligerent activity. I still snuck out the house and did shit here and there, but for the most part, I was a pretty good kid. Um, 
kind of got in some trouble my freshman year of high school with a drug deal in the fucking hallway but it was like three and a half fucking grams of weed but at the time it was like 2013 so that was like a fucking federal offense uh, my senior year of high school started selling a little bit of drugs but that was just minor figures uh, <laughs> just two fucking idiot kids trying to make money basically um, coming into college uh, yeah that's that's when I knew like the drugs just found me. That's when I knew either either the drugs just found me or or I just couldn't resist them. But I always found people who just love drugs. If if you if you're tend towards an addictive personality, we just find each other. <laughs> but I think that's <laughs> What is an addict? An addict is somebody that basically loves to feel good all the time now that is your greatest weakness but it is also your greatest strength because they will an addict will do fucking anything to get to that bag and i'm not just talking about a bag of white i'm talking about a bag of money as well as long as you get your fucking act together and you may not be an addict you may have never struggled with addiction but this this video is still worth watching because i'm sure you can find some similarities in your life anyways i'm gonna stop bullshitting um yeah i remember one time me and my buddy always used to get fucked up take a bunch of xanax one of my closest friends and <laughs> We always kind of kept an eye on each other where we all we both kind of moderated the amount each of us did um but you know as time went on people start doing shit behind your back you start doing shit behind their back and i'm not talking about sneaky shit i'm talking about like doing drugs alone basically um and i remember one of my homies he uh started getting deep into the zants I, I, I didn't even know about it really but he started getting kind of deep into it and I remember um, <laughs> there was this one time where basically he told me hey can you go pick up Zans for me like hey can you go grab a couple Zans for me from this dude and I was like yeah you know what I'm, I'm, I was already about to pick some up for myself and when I went to pick uh, this hands up the guy was looking at me funny. I'm like, why is he why is this guy looking at me funny? And I ended up taking the hands and they were fucking bunk and I realized at that point I realized later on down the line the guy gave me bunk hands because Somebody told him to stop serving my buddy and he knew that I was coming for my buddy But I didn't even know my buddy had this problem at the time but the thing is, as men, we don't check until shit is too fucking late. We are, I've noticed this recently, we are really bad at dealing with, <laughs> with emotional conversations or with conversations that go kind of deep where you're talking about insecurities. As soon as that type of conversation comes up, guys will just... Oh, okay, okay. I know how you feel. Just keep grinding. Guys will say the most generic shit to get out of an awkward conversation because we're so bad at handling those types of deep situations and emotions. And, um, fuck, what was I saying? Yeah, I was saying, um, but I didn't know he had this thing going on. And you have to check on your people preemptively. You have to check on your people preemptively and you have to stand behind them because the amount that you stand behind them is as strong as you are and you can't even do it for them. You have to do it for yourself. You have to do it for yourself because some people just won't reciprocate your help. People that don't want help won't reciprocate your help. Let me get back to the story. But... I remember this is going on and 
one day I'm sitting at the library, right? And this guy calls me and he tells me, people are trying to break into my crib right now. I need your help. So I swear to God, I packed my shit up out the library so fast and I sprinted over there. I had this heavy ass laptop that I got from this Jewish dude named Jesse, refurbished laptop because I didn't have money to buy a real laptop. This thing was like a dinosaur. It probably weighed about 20 pounds. I had books in this backpack. I sprinted about three quarters of a mile with this backpack on sweating balls in the fucking freezing cold in Illinois. And I finally get there and I'm like, I stopped like a block short because I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm looking around, scoping out, like ready to beat a motherfucker's ass. And there's nobody there. So like, <laughs> I walk into the apartment, this dude's apartment, and I'm like, yo, where are the fucking people? And then I'm realizing as I'm saying this, how fucking stupid this is. I'm realizing how stupid it is because who would be trying to break into his apartment when I literally just walked in? And he's telling me, do you hear that? Do you hear that? You don't hear those people trying to crawl through the vents? And at that point, I realized he was just straight up bugging out. Dude had took, dude had, 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 they had stopped serving him Xanax. So he went to the fucking hospital, um, made some shit about, up about how he couldn't sleep because he was taking a bunch of Adderall because he was diagnosed with ADHD. And so they gave him Valiums. And this is how fucking stupid our, our medicinal system is. And, and especially in Champaign, Illinois, how stupid those fucking doctors are. They just gave it to him. So he was tripping for like several days, sleep deprived, but taking Valiums, mixing that with other shit. And yeah, you're goddamn right. I sprinted over there, tried to help him. But the thing is, you have to check preemptively. You have to be on top of this shit. You have to be looking out for your people. And when I come on here and I tell you guys you need to get your fucking fat ass in shape. When I tell you that you're ruining your family and you're ruining the people around you through your poor choices. This is why. It's not because it's some bullshit. I've had firsthand experience with all this. And the thing is, when you don't look out for them, we think, we think, especially when you try and look out for somebody that just doesn't, doesn't want to get it together that first time, especially with people on drugs and alcohol or just people that need to make massive changes in their life. They're not going to be, they're not going to reciprocate or take your advice the first time. That does not mean you stop in your persistence. That does not mean you stop and just go your own way. Now there's a certain point where people cannot be helped if they don't want to help themselves. But there needs to be some sort of effort on your side because everything comes around full circle. And I remember thinking this dude, I remember thinking, Jesus Christ, I love Xanax, but I will never be like this kid. I will never be doing some dumb ass shit like that. As the years went on, two years later, I'm going through the exact same shit. I'm taking Xanax every night. I'm taking Adderall every day. I never had a prescription, but I was getting off several different dealers. So people had no regards. They're just, they're just college kids trying to make money. They're not thinking about this kid has an addiction. They're not really looking out for me like that. The same way that I was serving motherfuckers. I remember serving a chick every day, giving her like 20 Zans every day. She picked up for her and her homegirls, but I'm pretty sure she was taking the fucking majority of them. I didn't give a fuck. This fucking poor girl, I just got her completely fucking hooked and had no regard for it. Didn't even look her in the face. Or I, or I would look her in the face, but wouldn't even say shit when I served her. 
That's how much of a fucking piece of shit I was at the time. Everything comes around full circle. Everything comes around full fucking circle. That person that you didn't look out for. If you did. You really are only as strong as your circle. Really. And everything that you don't think is going to come back to you. Fucking will. I remember I had my senior year of college, I had an experience where I don't know what the fuck I did that night. I probably took about a couple of hands, drank a fifth of Remy to myself, had a couple more drinks. And might have smoked DMT. I might have hit a DMT pen, but I don't fucking know to this day. And I remember giving my whole, I never opened up to anybody during that time, but I remember this night, it was unofficial night in Champagne, which was like St. Patrick's Day. I, uh, I basically opened up to everybody, told them about everything I was going through. And I have no idea why I did that. And I'm pretty sure I fucking smoked DMT, but I'm not positive. I also remember that night meeting all these people who I had been serving and having a conversation with them and being in a, in a party with each and every one of them. And it was the most awkward shit ever. I don't remember if this shit actually happened. I don't remember if this shit actually happened. I had days that went by. I had events that went by. I can't think of any, uh, any other specific ones. But I had events that I'm still not sure to this day were real or were just me in a half dreaming state because I was taking so much Xanax and that to me is full proof that it all comes back full circle you have to no matter how much you feel like you're wasting your energy on people if those people are close to you you have to you have to realize that this is fucking ride or die You have to put more effort into them. And I, I think back and there's people that I, I really wish I would have put more effort into them. Not even necessarily for their own sake, if I'm being completely honest, but for my sake. Because when you when you don't put into somebody else, I don't know why. The world karma, God is just gonna is just gonna repay you that straight back. That's why I do the shit I do today now is is because I believe in repaying the fucking world. And that's really it. You just you just got to always keep your people close to you. Always check on your people preemptively. Be prepared for those awkward conversations. Be prepared. Don't run from them. Especially if you're a man, don't run from those awkward conversations. Move towards them like a fucking man. And stop being so fucking goddamn nice all the time. Sometimes you gotta tell people what the fuck it really is. Sometimes you gotta point out people's flaws and be prepared for the backlash that comes with it. You have to. Because I guarantee they will look at you one day and thank you.
But if you don't, you're going to look back one day and you're going to end up in the same situation that they were thinking, why did nobody help me? That's exactly what happened to me. And I don't want that to happen to anybody else. Get your shit together. Check on your people. Check on your family. No matter, no matter what the fuck is going on with them, you got to, you, you, you got to tell them what it is. And if they don't want to accept it, it is what it is. But you got to persist in your efforts. Do it for yourself. Don't even fucking do it for them. I know how you are watching this video right now. You probably feel like the world has fucked you over. You probably feel like you have a lot of people in your life that don't deserve your time of day, don't deserve your love, don't deserve your efforts to keep them healthy, and they don't deserve your input that's going to keep them safe. You deserve it. You deserve it. You have to give it to them. That shit will eat away at you if you don't. That's all I got.